Have you ever wondered why the British colonies across the Americas grew up so differently? Think of them as siblings in a big family, each moving to a new place and making their own way based on where they settle. The eldest brother stands for Virginia, Maryland, and North Carolina. Before leaving Britain, he hears about rich lands and a crop that could bring wealth, tobacco. The warm climate and fertile soil make these regions perfect for farming. When he arrives, he finds the land ideal for this cash crop. At first, he works with explorers like John Smith and indentured servants from Europe. These indentured servants agree to work for several years in exchange for passage to the New World, food, and shelter. Leaders like Lord Baltimore set up colonies like Maryland as safe places for Catholics, but making money from tobacco is also a big goal. Over time, he turns to enslaved Africans, relying on their forced labor to boost profits. The transatlantic slave trade becomes a harsh reality, and the number of enslaved people grows. Women in these colonies often run the homes, and sometimes the plantations when men are away, while children help with chores and learn skills needed for plantation life. Relations with native peoples like the Powhatan in Virginia include both trade and fighting. Wars like the Anglo-Powhatan Wars happen over land and resources, and diseases like smallpox kill many native people, changing the population greatly. They set up the House of Burgesses in Virginia, one of the first places where people could vote for their leaders. This lets landowners have a say in local decisions, starting the path towards self-rule. Legal rights like trial by jury begin to form. Religion isn't the main focus here, but the Church of England matters, and ideas from the Enlightenment spread, encouraging thoughts about freedom and self-government. Their culture centers on plantation life and a society with clear classes, the rich plantation owners at the top, poor farmers and enslaved people at the bottom. British laws like the Navigation Acts make them trade mainly with Britain, which some colonists start to dislike because of mercantilism. Pirates along the coast threaten trade and safety, adding to the challenges. Meanwhile, the middle brother represents the New England colonies. A man of strong beliefs, he joins the Puritans, led by people like John Winthrop, to build small towns like Salem, Boston, and Providence. Leaders like Roger Williams in Rhode Island fight for freedom of religion, while Thomas Hooker starts Connecticut. New Hampshire, founded by John Mason, focuses on fishing, wood, and trade, helping the area's economy. Before they leave, they bring tools for farming and trade. The rocky soil and cold weather make big farms hard, so they focus on small farms. Their lives center on family farms and local markets. Women manage homes and help the community, and children go to school to learn to read, often so they can read the Bible. They succeed with a mix of farming and business, like a balanced diet keeps a person healthy. They fish, hunt whales, and build ships, trading things like lumber and furs, building a strong economy. Resources like wood and fish are important, and life on the frontier is hard, but offers chances for those willing to work hard. Relations with native peoples like the Wampanoag are important, but fights like King Philip's War cause many deaths and change who owns the land. Disease affects both colonists and native peoples. Religion is central here, with movements like the Great Awakening causing strong emotions. Different groups like Baptists and Methodists appear. They make agreements like the Mayflower Compact and the Fundamental Orders of Connecticut, focusing on self-rule and community choices. They set up schools like Harvard College in 1636 to train ministers. Education is important, and many people can read. Communities are close-knit, people live longer, and education matters. Art and writing start to grow, with printing presses making books and pamphlets. British trade laws affect them too, making some feel limited, and ideas from the Enlightenment shape their thoughts about government and rights. Further south, the youngest brother stands for the middle colonies, including Pennsylvania, New York, New Jersey, and Delaware. He grows grains like wheat, barley, and oats. The good soil and mild weather make these colonies the breadbasket. Soon, people from all over Europe, like the Dutch, Germans, Swedes, and Quakers, led by William Penn, join him. This brings many cultures, languages, and religions. Religious diversity includes Jews, Catholics, Quakers, and others. New Jersey and Delaware become places where many people mix. It creates a rich blend where tolerance is a way of life. William Penn's frame of government in Pennsylvania promotes freedom of religion and fair treatment of native peoples. They interact with native tribes like the Lenape more peacefully because of fair policies. Women often run businesses and farms, and children learn jobs or go to school. They farm, trade, and make goods, building industries like ironworks and cloth making. Resources like iron ore help the economy grow. They have elected assemblies, giving people a voice, and legal rights are respected with courts being set up. Cities like Philadelphia and New York City become centers of learning and culture. Important people like Benjamin Franklin contribute to science and public life. British trade rules affect them, but their mixed economy helps them deal with it. Pirates threaten their ships, but they build strong ports. The population is diverse, leading to a more open society. There is economic inequality, but a middle class starts to form. 
Meanwhile, distant cousins settle on the southern Atlantic coast and in the British West Indies, in places like South Carolina, Georgia, Jamaica, and Barbados. The warm weather and long growing season are perfect for plantations of rice, indigo, sugar, and cotton. James Oglethorpe starts Georgia as a place for debtors to begin anew and as a shield against Spanish Florida. They clear large areas of land, knowing these cash crops will sell well abroad. They rely heavily on the labor of enslaved Africans, who often make up most of the population. Stono Rebellion in South Carolina shows the tensions and harsh realities of slavery, which also exists in northern colonies, affecting economies and society. These enslaved people form their own cultures and religious practices, keeping their heritage alive despite harsh conditions. Relations with native peoples include conflicts like the Yamasee War, caused by trade disputes and taking land. Diseases affect both colonists and native peoples. Their laws are often controlled by rich plantation owners, and economic inequality is clear. Their economies are tightly linked to Britain through trade rules, making them vulnerable to changes. Pirates in the Caribbean threaten trade routes. Other siblings go to Canada, setting up colonies in Newfoundland and Nova Scotia. They fish and trade furs. The cold climate and rough land shape their way of life. People like John Guy lead settlements in Newfoundland, while the Acadians settle in Nova Scotia. They rely on the sea and trade with native peoples, building relationships that are crucial for survival in the harsh environment. Another sibling, the Hudson's Bay Company, explores the vast lands of Rupert's Land. Traders like Henry Hudson and Pierre Radisson travel rivers and forests to trade furs with native nations. Their ventures expand British influence deep into the continent. All the while, Britain acts as a parent who is busy and doesn't pay much attention to the kids. The Atlantic Ocean is both a barrier and a bridge, connecting them but also keeping them apart. Because of this distance and lack of oversight, the colonies start to govern themselves. In New England, town meetings are like family dinners where everyone has a say. They elect leaders to their colonial legislatures, making decisions as a community. In the middle colonies, assemblies like the Pennsylvania Provincial Assembly allow for self-rule. In the South, rich planters like William Berkeley in Virginia and Charles Calvert in Maryland act like heads of the family, making choices based on their interests. Legal practices develop, including the right to trial by jury. British trade laws like the Navigation Acts enforce mercantilism, requiring the colonies to trade mainly with Britain. This causes some resentment among colonists, who feel limited and unfairly taxed. Enlightenment ideas spread, encouraging thoughts about freedom and rights. Signs of unity and division begin to appear. Events like the Albany Plan of Union propose greater cooperation among colonies, though it doesn't succeed. Colonial wars like Queen Anne's War and King George's War affect the colonies and their relationships with European powers. Colonies start to share ideas through newspapers like the Pennsylvania Gazette. Art and writing grow, with poets like Phyllis Wheatley expressing the complexities of colonial life. Education expands, with more schools and colleges being started. Comparing the British colonies to other European colonies shows differences. Spanish colonies in the Southwest focus on converting native peoples and searching for gold, while French colonies in Canada and along the Mississippi River trade furs and build alliances with tribes like the Huron. The British colonies have more settlers and varied economies. Cultural developments include the rise of newspapers and the founding of colleges like Yale University. Migration patterns show people moving between colonies and new immigrants arriving from Europe and Africa. Population numbers vary. In New England, people live longer and have large families. The middle colonies are diverse, and the southern colonies have many enslaved people. Resistance and rebellions happen, such as Bacon's Rebellion in Virginia and Leisler's Rebellion in New York, showing internal conflicts and unhappiness with colonial leaders. Even though these colonies share a common origin under British rule, each one develops its own identity, shaped by the land, the people, and their interactions with others. Just like siblings who grow up and find their own paths, the colonies become distinct societies. Despite their differences, these siblings start to realize they have common goals. The challenges they face under British laws and their desire for self-rule begin to bring them together. Just like brothers and sisters who may argue but come together when facing a common problem, the colonies see that by uniting, they can be stronger. The very things that made them different also set the stage for them to unite, leading to the birth of a new nation. Different journeys can lead to different destinations, but also bring people back together in unexpected ways. The factors that made the colonies different also laid the groundwork for them to unite, leading to the birth of a new nation.